Okay, thank you. Um, so I've been assigned to review um, conditions that also present with uh, medium-sized artery disease, but that are not vascular EDS, and I will mostly focus on the ones that are TGI beta related and uh, some syndromic forms. So um, within the last uh, couple of years, we've discovered quite a lot of genes in the TGI beta uh, signaling uh, pathway uh, that are uh, giving um, rise to a condition, uh, Lewis Dietz syndrome, but also some related conditions. So we'll start with uh, Lewis Dietz syndrome. Uh, as you probably all know, in 2005, we first described a clinical uh, triad, which is characterized by widely spaced eyes or hypertilarism, the presence of cleft palate or a bifid uvula, and a bifid uvula should be considered as the minimal expression of a cleft palate, and then the association uh, with arterial tortuosity, um, aortic aneurysms and dissections, but already from early on, I uh, realized that the disease is going beyond uh, the aorta and also affects uh, the medium-sized arteries. So, um, it's a condition that resembles Marfan syndrome, has some skeletal features in common, as well as the root aneurysm. But as I said, um, very typical is the occurrence of aneurysms throughout the arterial tree, which also give uh, rise to early rupture and depth. And um, the condition um, also is characterized by the presence of craniosynostosis, club, club feet, um, important cervical spine instability, and um, other uh, cardiovascular uh, disorders. So we identified uh, TGI beta receptor 1 and 2 as the genes underlying this condition. But uh, very early on, uh, we realized that there was a very broad spectrum. And actually, the first follow-up paper that we published was starting from patients that looked like uh, vascular EDS but didn't show a COL3 uh, mutation. And in that cohort, already uh, we identified also TGI beta receptor 1 and 2 mutations. So I think we now realize that uh, TGI beta receptor 1 mutations can be uh, associated with um, probands, mostly uh, as a consequence of de novo mutations um, with uh, very um, severe outward features, so the craniosynostosis, the cleft palate, uh, the hypertilarism, that also seem to correlate with a severe um, aortic um, involvement. And on the other hand of the spectrum, we have uh, more familial cases that have uh, less outward features and fit more in the familial thoracic aortic aneurysm spectrum. Um, however, what we do also observe is that um, the identical mutations can give rise to both ends of the spectrum. So it, it is uh, probably other genetic modifiers that uh, determine the cardiovascular severity. And what we've also seen is that within one family, um, mildly affected parent uh, can have a more severely affected child. So when we look at the cardiovascular involvement in patients with TGI beta receptor 1 and 2 mutations, um, uh, arterial tortuosity is very common, uh, specifically affecting uh, the vessels that go to uh, the head and, and, and neck, such as the carotids, the vertebrals, and the intracranial aneurysms. And um, we see a widespread involvement uh, in the aorta, which uh, uh, points to the need for um, a diagnostic evaluation that goes beyond uh, the aortic root, as we usually do in Marfan syndrome. Uh, when we look at uh, vessel involvement uh, beyond uh, the aorta, uh, we observe that about 30% uh, do have uh, involvement of uh, the side branches uh, of the aorta. So again, um, pointing at the widespread uh, vascular involvement in this condition. So since the initial publication, the uh, field has evolved and uh, more genes have been identified. I will uh, briefly review them and then focus on how often uh, medium-sized artery disease has been um, reported in, in, in those groups. Uh, some, for some of them, the numbers are still small, but I think the pattern that emerges is that with all of these genes, uh, there is a risk for uh, involvement of the medium-sized arteries. So the first one uh, was uh, described by uh, Ingrid, who is here also, um, which um, found the association with early onset um, osteoarthritis, uh, but already at that time they noticed also the bifid uvula, the hypertilarism, uh, putting it clearly in the spectrum of uh, Lewis Dietz syndrome. And we've seen a very severe um, um, medium-sized artery involvement in patients with SMAT3. I'm just showing here one example with uh, vertebral artery dissection, uh, aneurysms of the carotid, vertebral and iliac arteries, and uh, ultimate death uh, due to a vessel rupture in, in, in the brain. 
Um, very similar for TJ beta 2, which we initially identified uh, due to a, a deletion. Uh, we've seen examples of patients that uh, do have primary dissections of uh, subclavian uh, internal mammary arteries and uh, aneurysms of the subclavian vertebral and common iliacs. Um, the most uh, mild one probably in the spectrum is uh, mutations in TJ beta 3 because we've seen uh, pretty high incidence of uh, non-penetrance, about 50% of the patients with uh, mutations in this gene do not have any vascular involvement at all. But again, uh, we also noticed uh, early on uh, that there is um, disease beyond the aorta with cerebral, iliac, and uh, subclavian artery uh, aneurysms. Uh, and um, confirming that even in this milder form of Lewis Dietz syndrome, uh, there is widespread involvement of the arteries. Uh, the most recent one is uh, SMAT2. Um, again, uh, initially was reported in uh, patients with uh, as well aortic as uh, arterial uh, involvement. And uh, when you look at our most uh, recent experience, you can see that there was uh, in a series of uh, 15 uh, patients, uh, three that had uh, cerebral artery aneurysms, three that had tortuosity of the same arteries, uh, one coronary artery dissection and one iliac artery abnormality. So again, uh, pointing at uh, widespread involvement. I've summarized um, the, the numbers that we came up with in a recent review paper. Uh, you can see that for the ones that we have quite sufficient uh, probands, I put up the percentages uh, going from uh, about 20 to about 40 or uh, even 45 percent when you take into account tortuosity. Uh, for SMAT2, the numbers are still low, but as I showed you, again, uh, significant involvement of uh, medium-sized arteries. So um, I think for all of these um, genes, um, it's fair to state that uh, they are in the same uh, spectrum and that the patients do need uh, more widespread imaging than just uh, the aortic root. If you would order, order them uh, for severity, uh, as I said, uh, TJ beta 3 would probably be at the uh, mildest end and the initially reported receptor 1 and 2 um, as the more severe ones. But I find it really hard to come up with uh, a big difference in, in the guidance that we should uh, give to those patients with regards to the imaging that they would need. Um, so three other conditions that are uh, TJ beta related but different uh, from uh, Lewis Dietz syndrome. The first one is Prince and Goldberg syndrome which is a, a rare condition with associates also craniosynostosis and uh, developmental delay. Uh, we've shown that uh, mutations cluster in the SMOT binding uh, domains of uh, SKI, which is an inhibitor of TJ beta signaling. And um, again, although not very common, um, two out of uh, four patients that had more widespread imaging showed also pulmonary artery dilation. So again, uh, we've not seen uh, dissections uh, in, in this group of uh, patients of, of medium-sized arteries, but I think there is also increased tendency for the development of um, aneurysms. Um, we recently identified SMAT6, uh, which is an inhibitor of um, BMP signaling as an important contributor to the uh, bicuspid aortic valve related thoracic aortic aneurysm. Um, we um, found that it's probably explaining about 2 to 3 percent of all BAV TAA uh, related um, patients. Uh, we recently did a, another follow-up um, experiment in which we started from over 400 TAA patients, uh, sequenced them uh, for SMAT6, and um, remarkably all the mutations that we found, uh, which was I think six in total, was in this uh, subgroup of BAV TAA patients. So pointing towards the fact that SMAT6 is really a specific uh, BAV TAA um, gene. Uh, when you look at um, other involvement, some patients did have coarc, and there was only one patient uh, in our cohort that had a brain aneurysm. So suggesting that SMAT6 does not uh, very often uh, present with uh, medium-sized artery involvement, and it's really BAVTA. Um, another one that uh, we identified uh, is X-linked gene, um, caused uh, by mutations uh, in a gene called biglycan. Uh, those patients do resemble um, Louis Dietz in that some of them also have um, the um, hypertelorism uh, and um, they present with very uh, severe um, early onset uh, of aortic dissections at uh, some of them at, at young age. Um, they have uh, features in common with uh, both Louis Dietz and Marfan syndrome. 
and again here uh, we did see some involvement of um, other um, arteries uh, with aneurysms of the pulmonary artery, one aneurysm of the ductus arteriosus and, and a brain aneurysm. So probably putting um, this gene uh, by glycan has a double function. It's hypothesized to also regulate uh, signaling pathways such as BDMP and TJ beta, but also has a role in the extracellular matrix where it can um, regulate um, uh, collagen and um, probably also elastin um, homeostasis. Um, then finally, um, I also uh, looked at some more recently uh, described uh, syndromic presentations of aortic aneurysm. Um, I think because there might be important differential diagnosis of patients with vascular uh, ehlers nano syndrome. Uh, the first one is ARI1, um, which is a, a gene that's involved in uh, myonuclear organization, so the binding of the um, uh, myofilaments uh, to, the, the, to the nucleus. Uh, it was discovered uh, initially in, in Drosophila, uh, but the patients uh, do present with EDS-like uh, presentations. You can see here the history of a patient that already at age six had a, a very diffuse uh, aneurysm but then later on also developed uh, dilatation of the branchiocephalic artery and the left proximal common correlated artery. And you can see the uh, atrophic scars and uh, joint laxity and uh, flat feet with uh, medial displacement of the malleolus. This was the first family. A uh, second family um, initially presented uh, only with uh, medium-sized artery aneurysms and, and that patient had a normal um, aorta. There was a family history of uh, TAA, but unfortunately none of the other individuals were available for uh, genetic testing, so we don't know, but it seems highly likely that this is the causal uh, gene in this family. And then the last family that they presented um, had a history of um, dissection and sudden cardiac death, but no um, other um, um, medium-sized artery involvement. Um, another one I think that's becoming increasingly important is uh, filament A, which is also um, X-linked. It was a very nice review paper in the American Journal of Medical Genetics where they found that 18% uh, of uh, the patients <coughs> had uh, thoracic aortic um, uh, dilatation. Um, also, I think important is that there is uh, examples now of um, rupture and dissection, which in the past we thought that filament A was rather benign, but it's obviously not uh, true. And I specifically also looked uh, for the uh, medium-sized artery involvement in this series. So it's a, a series of 114 patients, and they had um, also um, involvement of um, different uh, side branches of the aorta. Uh, one had um, a fatal subarachnoid rupture, um, which was secondary to a rupture of the internal carotid artery. And then um, if you look at everything together, um, either dilatation or vascular event, they came up with a number of 22.8%, which is quite uh, significant. And I think we do underestimate um, the importance of uh, vascular findings in uh, filament A uh, patients. Um, in 2016, uh, the group Diane Milovic published uh, mutations in lysyl oxidase, which um, is important for the crosslinks of elastin and collagen. In families with uh, TAA, also some increased incidence of uh, BAV. They did not report dissections at small diameters. And uh, we also recently identified uh, five uh, novel uh, families. The first one was limited to the aorta, had a morphanoid habitus. The second one, we also observed splenic rupture. And then in the last family, uh, there was also a coronary artery dissection and carotid dissection, again uh, pointing that it's not only uh, the aorta, which is uh, the most common um, in all those patients, uh, but also affecting uh, the side branches and um, also presenting with dissections of those side branches. Um, I think the most recent published gene probably is LTBB3, uh, which in um, homozygous uh, or compound heterozygous state causes a condition called uh, DAS, which stands for dental anomalies and short stature. And uh, they describe uh, type A and type B dissections, but again, um, arterial aneurysms were quite common in the uh, homozygous uh, and compound heterozygous individuals. Uh, there is some evidence that uh, maybe the um, heterozygous carriers also have um, aortic aneurysm. Uh, I did not find any evidence for uh, medium-sized artery involvement in the heterozygous carriers, but I think this is still a matter of discussion whether the heterozygous are really uh, affected. Um, 
Interestingly, they also looked at uh, mouse uh, models and uh, what they showed is that uh, the aorta is behaving um, in um, the uh, complete uh, knockout uh, similar to uh, the Marfan mouse models and that the cross of both uh, did not make it uh, worse. And then um, staying in the, in the recessive group, um, I just want to point at uh, two other recessive conditions. Uh, one is autosomal recessive acutis laxa type, uh, which is caused by uh, mutations in fibrillin 4, which is also a cross-linker of um, elastin and important for elastin synthesis, and um, mutations in a gene called gluten, or the, the protein uh, gluten encoded by SLC2A10. Uh, they both uh, present um, arterial um, aneurysms, um, but they have this remarkable association of stenotic parts of the aorta with dilated uh, parts of the aorta. Uh, it can be specifically of the aorta in the fibrillin 4, so they have stenotic parts and then dilated parts. Um, and in the arterial tortuosity uh, syndrome group, it's uh, mostly the pulmonary artery where you see uh, this kind of weird combination of uh, stenosis and, 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 um, and dilatation. Um, so Bert Kallewaert in the group of Ghent did a nice review also on um, arterial tortuosity syndrome. As you can see, the arterial tortuosity, of course, is a main characteristic, but 57% uh, had also pulmonary artery uh, stenosis. Importantly, in this uh, condition, no dissections have been described, but ischemic stroke probably related to the tortuosity um, has been uh, described. And uh, they do present um, other arterial aneurysms. In this uh, total group, they came up with uh, I'm sorry, 13 uh, percent, um, but uh, none of them had uh, dissections. And again, uh, pointing at uh, the importance of uh, the stenotic uh, pulmonary artery. So I think in, in general, uh, for all the TJ beta and other syndromic uh, presentations of aortic aneurysm, um, we can state that they do have uh, involvement of the medium-sized arteries and probably points toward a need to uh, do imaging. Um, I think there is examples of arterial dissection, but I think it's too early to decide uh, which conditions are prone to these arterial dissections and which are not uh, because of the uh, small uh, numbers. Thank you for your attention.